Hi everyone, welcome to Handicrafts A to Z channel and in today's tutorial we're gonna make this beautiful chain stitch necklace that is made of the leftover beads and junk seed beads, something that you would, wouldn't use in your regular embroidery work the uh, all these ugly beads as I call them they're quite useful in making this beautiful chain stitch necklace it looks beautiful very elegant sparkly and good use to use all these leftover beads let's get started Now to make the chain, st uh, chain stitch necklace or the bracelet what you need is the uh, first of all obviously the mixture of beads this, this is just the uh, I just throw everything all the leftovers like the uh, pearl beads the, of course they're fake the uh, the beads different kinds of different sizes and shapes and colors some crystals different types or whatever matches your fantasy just dump everything into the into the bowl you need obviously the uh, the fishing line this one is the that's my favorite size 0 0.2 millimeter and it's quite strong to hold it that's usually one bobbin is enough to make one one necklace and one bracelet it's just perfect for the set you need the uh, the chain the lock I use the crab lock and the ring of course you need the bead cap uh, bead cups and some pins the round nose pins for the uh, attaching it to the to the crab lock also uh, that's for the materials as for the, and also you need a long threading bead needle this one is about I don't know four inches long that's for easier threading and also you need the round nose pliers and the wire cutters they are sold at the jewelry shops anywhere you can find them so it's very easy to access and it's good to have them if you plan to make uh, to work with a with a jewelry with beading and then that's quite useful so what we start with is I thread the needle with the fishing line and the most boring part no, one of the most boring parts is just sitting here like this couple of hours in front of TV threading sometimes you just may have to make sure that the uh, you get the the beads, the crystals are distributed evenly so you don't end up with just one side of the of your necklace is sparkling with crystals and the other one is just like plain beads and uh, seed beads so this is like you do what you do is occasionally threading and you need to thread about three to five meters long it all depends on how long and how thick you want to have your neck uh, your necklace and as I can as I can say this can last for hours so I will just keep on threading for about a couple of hours and I'll come back to filming this and it will be just a matter of nano nanoseconds for you so I'll be back in nanosecond now the second part of my video is actually making the the chain out of these beads that I threaded it's about five meters here as you can see this is what I get and just a remind for those for those that are not familiar with I, with any type of crochet uh, first of all we get the hook and the thread I'm showing it in white so that you can see what's actually happening here uh, so what I do I 
place the loop like this and I twist it just like fold like this and you can use it with your hand just like with the thre upper thread above you pick up the loop and you've got the slip knot and with this slip knot all you have to do is just pull the thread through and out in pull the thread ready pull the thread ready so this is how we make the chain using the chain stitch the crochet chain stitch and back to the to our beading carefully remove it off the box so it doesn't get tangled the last thing you want to do is untangle the fishing line carefully pull it carefully don't mess up and almost there so just don't cut it off once you finish it don't cut it off the the bobbin so you see no 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 not the best not the knot so this is you have to get ready for this kind of mess now before you can remove the needle so far because you don't need it at this point you might need a shorter one leave about 30 centimeters of the fishing line unused now make the same loop as i showed you before tie it make it tight and with the first three chains make the chains without any beads we need that because we will join we will attach other threads while we're uh, gathering all the necklace and you need to have a free space free of beads while we're doing that and just pick up some about I don't know two three inches of beads and start beating the uh, start crochet with a bead with the small beads I usually make two with the seed beads I make them usually two in a row anything bigger is one just make sure that you don't tie it uh, too loose you have to have this kind of airy feeling so when you do the, the when you collect uh, put all uh, everything together the, you have to have the impression that the beads are flo uh, floating in the air that you shouldn't see the fishing line so you have to have a space between them just like this so they're hanging in the air and like this now the next thing that you have to remember when you're doing the chain stitch necklace is when you come to the big point the uh, big bead you have to make keep at least one or two spare chains before and after the reason I'm doing it is that when you start collecting the, <coughs> the necklace this bead might appear just at the point where you have to stitch everything together and if you have like five beads sti uh, stitching at the same point uh, that would look ugly that that wouldn't fit into the bead cup and obviously it doesn't look nice so always leave your, yourself space so you can make just like a couple of millimeters in this way or in one side or another that doesn't make that much difference but that this gives you freedom so you can uh, attach the bead the uh, over here or you can use the space after the bead and and then install uh, also it looks nice when just like you got a single bead floating in the air among this bunch of others so again as i said you might use a bigger just because i use this uh, cheap beads the seed beads that i 
bought like ages ago when I just started beading and that was the only type of beads available just like half a half a pack half a kilo pack of beads with lowest quality and you cannot really do anything with them you cannot make the um, Russian beaded cord, you cannot make Turkish beaded cord, you cannot use it for embroidery, you cannot use it for beading lace or anything. So I've used it, there's lots of stuff like this for this chain stitch. I've got about 10 boxes with mi ready mixtures for this stuff. So I have lots of things to do over the summer and hopefully we'll get something for Christmas fairs. So I'm so tired of, uh, of not having fun not seeing people and hopefully we'll get all this vaccination done and we'll return to our normal life so again as I said big beat single small two might use just like this now I get some more and again Two or three inches it's not that much it just fits into your hand and it's easy to feed while you crochet like this you might use just a single small bead seed bead you can use two you can use three if they are really tiny but generally this is what you should have you should have a chain about I don't know six seven meters long to make the nice hanging uh, f kind of uh, fluffy necklace if you wanted something like 50 centimeters long plus you can get the extension uh, the extension uh, chain made of metal so you can have lots of fun with it but usually I make the 45 uh, 47 at the beginning and I end up with something like 50 52 uh, at the end and that is this is the length of the of the, uh, of the row of the pick that you would use when you're doing the um, when you complete everything together and again I've got the pearl here and I want to have at least one or two chains abo above before and after you can pull it tight if you don't like to big spaces but this is just like, as it goes so I guess I'll stop the filming now because that would, would take me about the uh, the whole evening to make all those five meter chain thread to chain and I'll be back to the filming just as soon as I finish this one it goes like this like this and so on make it single make it two make it three just as, as soon as uh, as long as you have lots of space between the beads that's absolutely perfect so this is what I get something like almost one chain for the, the chain for one row and I'll continue with that I'll be back soon now for the for the last part of this tutorial you will need the cardboard or anything that you can place your pin in and you can line up uh, make the lines that will, will be required to complete the chain chain stitch necklace and sorry <coughs> I still got a bit of allergy a bit of coughing and I might sometimes just cough in the middle of the conversation and what I've done here this is the 45 centimeters length of the uh, that will be the shortest line of my necklace and I mark put the line the next line I place just about seven millimeters below and to the side and the next one again to the about seven millimeters down 
to the side, down to the side. So at one side you got the straight line and on the other you've got this kind of ladder. You will need that as well, the lighter. So you've got this ladder here <coughs> and we are ready to start. So what I have here is the beginning. This is the thread. I don't know if you can see that. And the first three chains are three of beads. And what I do here is I insert the pin into the first loop, the first chain, and I pin it to the cardboard or the cushion or whatever you have. And just place it so it doesn't slide away. Just under the angle, I don't know if you can see that. Just under the angle, not straight, because the straight line will, sli will slide off easily. And on this side, I do exactly the same. And this is why I told you to keep make the space between the big beads, is that when you place the pin that bead might be, uh, don't pull it too tight just run it freely that you have space to insert the pin like this so that big bead doesn't get into the under the bead cup if you can imagine if you got 10 lines and all 10 bead, big beads are sitting here in the bead cup it's not really comfortable and all I have to do now is the zigzag is that I place it here place the pin and that makes the each line about five millimeters longer than the previous one that would create a nice cascade I usually make about 20 from 19 to 25 keep the number odd but I know a friend of mine was doing something like 40 45 uh, lines and you know, but she's a maniac her necklace are really exciting but they're quite heavy too so this is what I do just I don't, I don't try to make it visible like this so all I have to do now is do this zigzag from one shore of the cardboard to another and again I notice you that I don't cut the the fishing line just because and I got some spare beads at the end just in case I decide to make more lines or the one I've crocheted is not enough so right now I have one two three four five six seven that would be eight and nine so generally what we have to do we have to end up with the fishing line, line on one side and fishing line on the other that's why the number should be odd because with the even you will end up at the same corner when we started you might try if you think that this is a bit too loose for you pick up the both threads of the chain and up we go like this this is the exact situation the small bit is okay but if you got the bigger bit inside it's not really comfortable 
and we are back to the white zone Rudy is on his cat patrol as usual notifying neighbors that there's a cat walking on their territory So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's sixteen. Seventeen. And as you can see, I ran out of chain, so I might interrupt the video and I'll make additional about five to six meters. And in a couple of in a couple of your seconds, I'll be back. So I'll, I'll com complete till about this level. So it's one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I might do another three rows so end up here at this at this line. That would be pretty thick enough and quite give it give us a nice cascade. Now I have completed the line, the last pick, and it's just enough for me to fit. And just as I started, I end up with three, three empty chains. I make them loose, make the fourth one. And I cut the extra thread, extra fishing line. That would remain for the next project. And here, I just bind it off just like I would usually do with a crochet. Fixed it. Now the last pick is secured and we are ready to start to work with the wire. There will be diff ad additional tutorials for the wire but it's just a basic. Uh, I don't have the proper pins with a loop. Well, I do have them, but they are kind of very soft wire. So I use the solid, is it called the dead hard or something? And I use the round nose, nose pliers. So what I do is I need a thick, bigger, uh, bigger loop. So I grab the thread, the the wire as close to the wider pin, the uh, wider side of the pliers, and I turn it around. I don't close it completely, and I slightly bend it. So we've got the kind of fishing hook line, a fishing hook. I don't close it completely, just because we need to thread all the all the lines that we have made. So I got another one and again to the side and bend just like this. We will close that later when we get all the all the threads on the hook. So, starting from this ladder side, I I'm holding the hook by the uh, by the by the ring, and I carefully I remove the pin, 
and I slide the, the chain on the wire again just be careful so it doesn't just insert the wire first and then remove the pin insert the wire remove the pin insert the wire so that you you don't have to re redo all this lining again and again insert remove insert remove insert remove insert now the last one from this side now we've got we've got all the lines on the hook so what I have here now is all I have to do is to bend the ring completely and push it flat so that our fishing line doesn't get through the hole so you can see it's secured now I move to the other side and I do exactly the same from this corner the reason I'm doing this from the, from the ladder side first is that it's got more freedom <coughs> excuse me now again I hold the, the hook hold the ring insert release insert try not to twist it so if you insert it from one side insert it from from the same side at the, all the time now from up to down remove up down release up insert release insert release and so we go like this for another five picks last one and again use the round nose pliers bend the hook and press it now we have already this cascade which is nice and all we have to do now is secure all the threads and you can use the I'm uh, trying to get the, the thread the needle so I don't want to use the needle I used for the threading just an average thread uh, average needle would be good enough now this is the most important thing because it, the way you secure all the fishing lines in one corner depends on the integrity of your necklace so what I do now, I insert the needle through all the pins and tie the slip knot. Haven't used 
needle for ages. Now again, through all the loops, tie the knot. Throw the loops, tie the knot. It's boring. You have to make at least five to six knots on each side. And just put the pin on the other side and repeat from this corner. That's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. So we've got already a bunch of knots. Now the most difficult part is, I'll try to get it close as possible, is to insert the needle through all those knots and pull it through. And on the other side, exactly the same, throw the knots, I don't know if you can see them, but the needle goes through the knots that we just made. And I make another knot. Just because the fishing line is slippery itself, you have to make sure that it is fixed inside. So we do it back and forth a couple of times. Stitch through the knot easily, no problem. No problema. Now, now I decide that it's secured enough. All I have to do is trim the fishing line and now comes the the trickiest part in the whole process is I need to melt the fishing line close to the nodes but not touching the nodes so if I burn it I don't touch the flame and that's it so you can see the flame was going on very fast and right now the knot is sealed it's solid plastic here now and all I have to do is find my bead, no, bead cup, like this. Might do the, make the knot smaller, the loop smaller. So I didn't expect it to be just like, it was like six years ago when I did the last chain stitch necklace. So a bit of things forgotten the size of the bead cup and everything like this or maybe place a smaller one but this is the only one I have found so far because I ran out all this uh, furniture or spare parts now I might additionally add some beads here if you want it's all up to you but generally, let me get let me get all the wire done. It's nice to have a box to keep all your beads, so you can just release everything. to play with. It's fun to thread it, then fun to, uh, to release it. Ooh. Fun time. Now, out of all the beads, I like this facet ones so I'll keep two I might use the round one if I have enough that's four more than enough and maybe a couple of 
blue on each side so what I would do is thread the blue brown oops and I don't have the flat flat nose pliers to straighten it but you can do it with your hand and like this sorry now I have everything everything threaded on the wire this would be act as extension or just the separation bar between the necklace itself and the, the crab lock and what I do I just bend to the side make the circle again and insert the crab lock bend it complete, completely and one side of the necklace is ready now we can move to the second one and as I said it's just exactly the same absolutely the same and again we make five to six knots on each side of the round round pin ne neck sorry my <coughs> allergy medicine slows down my, my brain and hopefully next week the pine will stop blooming and I will have a couple of weeks break before we get another something blooming so for the next couple of weeks there will be lots of videos hopefully because right now I'm kind of a zombie the coughing zombie with running nose and itchy eyes now to the side and stitch again let me get the camera closer and again pick up got this loop insert the needle through the loop and tie the knot I think it's more than enough and then slide the needle through the knots you know making these knots a bit like tatting haven't haven't tried that something new to, to try maybe later now make a knot slide through knot and another slide through don't push it too much because the fishing line can rip and just don't push it over its boundaries and again I trim so this part is no longer needed again I might just tie the knot closer on this side there shouldn't be any problem because this one got thicker and again I'll try to show with my hands as a background I 
I don't burn the wire because it starts to burn itself. It's more than plenty. plenty. The little burning knot on the edge would, wouldn't go through the, the knots that we already made and it will stay secure. And just as I said, this part looks neater. And all, oops, sorry. I'm not really got used to this new camera holder. And I would need three more. So I straighten the, the pin. I do one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this would be the other side. I don't have the jump rings. And just as I said, it's been like five to six years since I was doing this. I ran out of all the supplies. And with the COVID, it's hard to get one locally. And will take ages to wait for online. So I use the uh, this kind of elements. They're quite solid. Usually they are designed to hold the uh, the whole necklace as a part of it. But working as a jump ring is a perfect solution. You can attach the the extension uh, chain, just a metal chain, the matching color so that you can have uh, the extension so if you don't want to have 45 but instead of 50 you can use the extension chain without redoing the necklace so that's it the one day project is over that's if you work it the full day on it it'll probably take even less something like six hours and it's nice necklace. So that's it for today. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Bye.